tire folks. I know there's not a lot of background noise because Force G's over there watching his uh, ABC songs. But I just want to show you this dough that I made. And I actually made this uh, yesterday, day before. Day before. Okay, so it's just two day old dough. It's fine. It's been in the ref, but I made it and I threw the yeast to it. And it just didn't really rise too much at all. Uh, <clears throat> the problem is our riff, it's not a problem, it's a good thing. A riff is, I keep it cold because I like my beer cold. So, uh, I think it had the dough way too cold. It's almost like it's frozen, but that, that's fine. But I made this dough with flour. Uh, what else I put in there? Oh, the, the thing the thing about it, I thought I was using a can of uh, carnation milk. Of the, you know, the milk you cook with, but it was the damn, what kind, what was that, baby? It was like the... <laughs> it's the It's the milk that you pour, it's real thick, thick milk, sweet milk, whatever it is, more like icing. <laughs> so these things are going to have a good sweet taste to them, but I did throw the yeast to it and attempt to get this this thing to rise but just take a look here how my biscuits are going to look and what i'm going to try to do is it, well they're not biscuits they're rolls because they got yeast i'm going to try to cook them over here in uh in the dutch oven in the lodge 3.2 quart cast iron combo cooker that's what i'm going to try to do so i just wanted to show you this dough you know, I had I had it pressed down in here. It, it rose a little bit, but it, I think the ref was just too cold. But it's going to make some delicious biscuits, I think. And then after I cook the biscuits, I may just line the uh, the cast iron pan and maybe make like a pie crust, like a casserole. I don't know, but this is going to be an experiment because we don't have an oven here. So we just use this thing here and I'll put it on the barbecue grill underneath some coals. I'll put coals on top and we turn it into a Dutch oven, my friends. Hey, if you're not a subscriber, bottom right hand corner of your screen right there. Click that overstay road sign. Helps us out with the algorithm and we certainly appreciate it. All right, my friends, thanks for joining us. All right, so Fatima is going to test out whether or not she can get a leech on her leg. What she doesn't know is that there was a huge crocodile spotted in this creek. Nah, ain't no crocodiles up here. Fatima is looking kind of cute today. She finally got over her uh, angry spell. She was angry at me for a few hours at least. We got 4th G, Faye. I know you've seen this scene before, but you know, kind of our nightly walk. Let's come down to the river. My goodness. Our baby, come across right there and show all the viewers how how deep it is right here. Yeah. I'm just trying, I'm trying to figure out how deep it is in the middle if there's fish in there. Can you just go over here a little bit? Can you try to <laughs> She can't swim. Well, she can swim for about maybe 10 good feet before she sinks. Honey, I'm, I'm convinced you can make it across this. They have what? Linta. What's a linta? The, the, the 
the black one who uh, blood sucker. <laughs> so Fatima said the black one who do the, and then Faye said the blood sucker. <laughs> so between Fatima and Faye, now I understand it's a leech, right? Well, we call it a leech. What's the name in Tagalog? Linta. Linta? Yes. Linta. Linta or Lintak? Linta. Linta. All right, so if Fatima swims... Sa ano, Bisaya, it's a... Ano, Alimato. It's a Linta or an Alimato? Uh, Tagalog is a Linta. Bisaya is Alimato. Okay, so... Just swim from here to there, and if you get an alimato, then everybody knows not to swim in the river. Okay. Would you do that for the subscribers? No! <laughs> okay, all right, well, I'll try to get her to check it, folks, but she won't. Maybe I'll finish my beer, take a little dip. Swimming. Nah, I don't take the Force G over there. It's, it's, it's okay if you get eaten by the crocodile, but not my Force G. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I got the beautiful wife number one over here, peeling garlic. And that's just one chore that, I, you know, cooking wise, I just do not enjoy. I don't mind slicing the garlic, but peeling the garlic and getting it down to, uh, to where it's in these little, you know, ready to ready to slice cloves. I don't enjoy it, but the fact of is very patient when it comes to this, these little tedious kitchen tasks, and I certainly appreciate her taking care of that for me. And what I had, I had this cardboard box thinking that it was gonna go up in smoke, and now it's slow to start here. Should have just put some regular paper under there. It's a pretty big skillet, right? pretty big ass skillet it is heavy it comes with this lid which also doubles as another uh, skillet and you put it on top you know it's got a got a handle there it, it doubles up as a uh, as a Dutch oven it just works out real well great piece of gear certainly enjoyed uh, using this product and no this is not a paid promotion I'm not affiliated with uh, Lodge Manufacturing. I just like their products. They're out of South Pittsburgh, Tennessee. <clears throat> this gear was made in the U.S. by U.S. hands. And it's sold here in the Philippines in Manila by an authorized distributor. So there, it, is, it is, they are legitimate products. And like I said before, maybe, I mean, close to the same price, you get some of this stuff in the States. Some things are a little more expensive, I guess because of the weight, but some things um, like my my little combo cooker here was basically the same price it was if I ordered it in America. So I was proud of that. You want beer now? Yeah, can you put one in the... Uh... Yeah, what are you doing? Thank you, baby. It's, it's in the freezer? All right, so she's got me one beer in the freezer. And folks, that's the, way, that's the way I drink beer. You keep them in the raft, but when you get ready to drink them, you throw them up in the freezer for maybe eight minutes. About eight minutes, get them pu pulled down to the appropriate temp. And then you, uh, you just hope you don't forget about them, or then, then it turns into a beer slushy. <laughs> and I have one of those today, because this girl forgot about my beer. Went off to the market, and by the time I got it, it was a slush. But that's okay, it was a delicious slush. Should have used these guys in the first place. Like I said, there ain't nothing, nothing planned or scripted about this cooking show. Anything that can go wrong, it usually does. Oh shit, I almost dropped the lighter in there. Blow the lighter up. I guess that would have been entertaining. Yeah, just keep peeling all that stuff for me, baby. You're doing a great job. You're doing a great job. 
Get that paper going. There we go. Okay, so note to self, don't use the damn cardboard. Cardboard just don't work. All right, so I've greased up. I'm greasing up this pan. Baby, you got a spot where I can put this butter? Ah, just put it right there on top of them biscuits. Yeah, they're gonna fit, baby. They're gonna fit. Oh, it's like a woman in the bed. There's always room for one more. Maybe. There's room for you, buddy. All right, so that's the biscuits right there in the pan. Ready to go. So once this thing gets going, damn, now I got butter all over the GoPro in my back pocket. Once this thing gets going, instead of sitting this directly on the coals, I'm gonna put it up on the grill to put some separation from the coals. And then I'll just put, try to put a few coals on, on top to turn this thing into a Dutch oven. So that's what, that's what the plan is right there, folks. So I'll just cover that up, keep the flies off of it. So folks, I did this video. I was looking for some kitchen knives. And somehow or another stumble onto these damn knockoff, either knockoff or stolen damn bare grills folding knives, if you can see that. <laughs> and I just got it because I needed something to chop vegetables with. And the question is, will this this uh, fake knife cut cut the onions? And I can tell you right now, it's it's not it's not sharp at all. I mean, the damn thing. You know, if you get a legitimate uh, if you get a legitimate Gerber knife, the uh, the knife is sharp right out of the box. But I, I knew right then when I I mean. You, Obviously, I knew by the price, but you could have blindfolded me, and I could have told you that that's not a legitimate product. But I just wanted some cheap knives where if we mess them up. All right, thank you, baby. Thank you. You know, if, we're, if, if we mess the knives up or I take them with us, barbecue at the beach, whatever, it, uh, you know, I didn't have a lot of money invested in them. And that's how I came across these knives somehow. So I'm gonna sit here and chop, chop the vegetables up with the Bear Grylls uh, folding hunting knife or whatever the hell they call it. The real one uh, that, that Gerber sells is like 35 bucks and it's made in China. It's not one of their American made products. So it's made in China. I'm not sure how much better quality it's gonna be than this thing uh, because it is made in China. But the knife that I'm looking at is a Gerber uh, strong arm. It's made in the US, 70 bucks. And so that's what I'm looking at uh, purchasing for my main kitchen knife. Now yeah, it's a hunting knife, survival knife, whatever you wanna call it, but I was just looking for a good sturdy knife I don't like the regular kitchen knives. And that's how I came across this stuff. So I am gonna invest 70 bucks. Gerber strong arm, made in the US. I think it's, is it Portland, Oregon, or is it Washington? Shit, I can't remember. I think it's Portland, Oregon. You know what, I think it says on here. You can't see, it's too damn dark. But yeah, even if you go with uh, any of the Bear Grill knives, they're not, well, I don't want to say all of them, but I know the folding one is not made in America. It doesn't say it's made in the U.S. So uh, it's made in China. But I also noticed on Lazada, they are uh, knocking off the Gerber Strong Arms. They're about 30 bucks. He's putting off some flames over there. Damn fire department to show up here. Oh yeah, that's nice and cold. 
All right, now this thing is going so big. Oh shit, that shit got hot, folks. Dealing with this charcoal, it's like dealing with a different substance than what I am used to. So what I'm gonna do, I may be going about this ass backwards, but I'm not gonna put this right in the coals. I've got to put it up on that rail. So basically I've got to put my, my coals on the top now before I set it on top. And damn, today is a day I should have been wearing my boots. Because if I drop this on these flip flops, now even though you can make a Dutch oven out of this, it doesn't have like a real big lip up top. So you got to uh, use some caution because the coals will fall off. Now this grill is kind of flimsy, so instead of putting this thing or, uh, on there as normal, I'm going to put it up there like so, so it doesn't fall in. Okay, and there you go. So now we have an effective Dutch oven, okay, that's going to cook, that's going to cook our, uh, our biscuits. I'm not going to need this lid, so let me just get that out of, out of the way. Put that Mac Daddy down there, the heavy duty glove. So that's what we got. Now that might not be enough coals, but since I've got the old GoPro, I'm going to give you a good close up here with a GoPro. Now the lighting is not going to be perfect, but that's basically my setup right there. Okay, just put you some coals on top. And now we got the Dutch oven. So while that's going on, I'll come back over here to my chopping block. And we're gonna chop up the chicken and some carrots. That's what I'm working with so far. And we'll get that to chopping up, folks. I do. I think I posted two videos today. Productive. Went for our nightly walk. It's just one of those days, you know, sometimes there's not much to report. That's just the way it is. So, uh, well, let's talk about current events. The coronavirus, which I named, renamed the, the, uh, the uh, Chinese bat research virus, the CBRV. What did I read today? Just scanning headlines, let's see. There's, uh, what is it, 900 new cases in one day in South Korea. So it looks like South Korea is getting hit. And I'm here in the Philippines, so you got a lot of Korean tourists come over here. Let's see what that comes out. Well, you know, I was just looking, listening to these idiots at the world WH, what, World Health Organization. Folks, all, all these fuckers with the UN, the UN, the World Food Program, World Health Organization, it's just charades. It's just one big fucking charades. It's like, it's like dignified welfare. All these fuckers that work for those organizations, they got no job, no credentials, and no real purpose. But you know, you prop them up at the UN, the United States paying most of the fucking bills, as we always do. Give them a fancy fucking title and put them in charge of a program that they're not qualified to fucking run. Certainly not qualified to, to balance the fucking budget. I mean, folks, you got, you got people in expert positions at the UN from countries where we're doing fucking missions and projects in their fucking countries. So it's, a, it's like a dignified welfare program. Um, and as far as I'm concerned, I mean, the, you know, the UN, the WHO, all those fucking organizations linked together like that. They've never done a goddamn thing. They never will. It's just a, uh, it's like a propaganda tool for the US. So what's, so what's so ridiculous is that you look at the definitions of epidemic, pandemic, outbreak, 
What's the other one they call clusters? These jackasses are still fighting over the terms. We're not gonna call this an epidemic. We're not gonna call this a pandemic. We're already fucking past that by definition, you stupid fucks. This thing has already started to burn around the fucking globe, okay? It is a fucking pandemic. It is an epidemic. Who gives a fuck what you're calling it? You guys aren't, you're not gonna do anything anyhow. But you're sitting there just fucking stalling, trying to waste time. Well, we, we can't call it that. We gotta, you know, be cautious and wait. You know, if, uh, if I were the President of the United States, I would stop funding to every motherfucking organization, the fucking UN, the World Health Organization, the, the fucking, uh, you know, World Food Program, all, if it's got any of that shit in there, <laughs> I would stop fucking any and all U.S. funding, and then Within a week, there wouldn't be any more of those organizations. They'd all fucking fade out. Nobody wants to come to work. Nobody wants to meet because nobody's fucking paying them. They're useless. The fucking tits. Useless is the fucking hair on my tits. All of them. So anyhow, a bunch of new uh, corona cases in South Korea. I guess new cases popping up everywhere. Then you got China with the balls to say, what the fuck they say? They say that uh, it's on the decline or something. The fucking Chinese or something. I mean, I, I don't believe any governments. I say that a million times, but but the damn Chinese, they're 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 the ones that are comical about what they're gonna try to fucking tell you. Okay, let me lift this up. Oh yeah, folks, the motherfuckers are cooking and they don't look like they're they're burning anywhere. They're cooking. Uh, I think it's gonna take a little while a little while. So what I'm gonna do is spin this thing real careful like so it doesn't come crashing off of here. I'm gonna spin that a little bit and I'm gonna spin the lid, you know, to just kind of spin the heat. So that thing's rocking on. It's rocking on, it don't smell like they're burning, don't look like they're burning. Now they may, the bottoms of them may burn because it's, you know, it's just that distance from the charcoal and it needs to be further. But this is what I'm working with. And if they do burn on the bottom, I'll just slice off the damn bottoms. <laughs> Folks, using my chopping block. Homemade chopping block that dude made me over there. On the far side of Subic Bay. Love that old cat. Hmm. All right, please don't fall. There we go. All right, so they burn a little bit on the bottom. And shit happens. Let me give a couple shout outs. My friend Carl, thank you very much. Hope you're doing well over there, man. Thanks for uh, thanks for the support on the back channels. That was awesome. You know, always big shout out to Benny for uh, supporting our channel. And I got one more friend that, that sent us some funds on the back channel. And man, I'll have to look at your name on the computer, buddy. I I just glanced at it this morning, but I want to thank everybody who did that. Mm. Oh man, that beer is delicious. I've been drinking beer pretty much all day, but I've been productive. I've been productive in what I've been doing all day. And folks, believe it, believe it or not, you know, I know everybody thinks I'm just hanging out here in the Philippines, Southeast Asia, being a bum. You can think what you want to think. But I do a day's work every day, doing something, you know? And if you think YouTube is a, uh, let's see, I would not do this with my real Gerber, but with this $3 piece of shit knockoff, I don't mind using it to open my beer bottle with. No way in hell I'd do this with my real knife. That damn thing is 
200 and something bucks. It's fucking quality. But you know what? Maybe if I use that lug, that might be easier. That lug work? I'm going to tear up the lug. No, the lug works. Um, now, if you think uh, running a YouTube channel, posting YouTube video videos is a fucking vacation, <laughs> you're a little bit wrong on that one. I mean, if you do it as a hobby where you pull out your cell phone at dinner and, and uh, shoot five minutes of raw video and hit upload, well, maybe it doesn't seem like much work to you. Maybe it, maybe it does seem like it's a hobby. But when you start posting videos of any type of substance, folks, I assure you, you being a YouTube sensation, it's work. So believe it or not, I do work every day. But I do have the luxury of drinking beer all day while I work. What's the worst thing that happens? You know, I fucking hit a hit the wrong key and de accidentally delete something. I mean, I'm I'm running camera equipment <laughs> and an iPad and a laptop. What I do now, I can drink all day. I'm not operating heavy fucking machinery. The worst that happened to me is I turn that camera over and, and you know bust my toe or something. There's not a lot of uh, things that. Well, I mean, I guess I am sitting here fucking working with fire, but I don't have a propane tank over here. So, <laughs> if I had a propane tank, okay, yeah, it'd probably be a little bit dangerous getting drunk. But I don't cook with propane. Use a little induction burner. That's pretty damn safe, and I cook with some charcoal right here. But yeah, I got the luxury of drinking beer all day. How can you not love that? Oh, yeah. Well, that puts off a smoke screen. Oh yeah, look at that. Ha <laughs> ha. All right, I'm gonna get the GoPro going. So that's what them rolls are looking at right there. And I just sat that on top of there so I didn't have to set it down on my, on my table. I'll check that out. Look at them rolls. Let me pull them out, see how they're gonna look. Oh shit. Damn. <laughs> Come on, Ira. They're breaking up on me. I think I made cakes. Okay, we could come over here. All right, so the good news is these things appear to be done. But I think what happened is I effectively made cakes. I put too much sugar and I put too much. Uh... Oh, my God, them things smell delicious. Holy shit, the ladies are going to love these. And they're perfect. They're a little bit burnt on the bottom. Folks, check that out. Okay, so here it goes. Let me let me take a taste test on this guy. I usually let the ladies do it first, but I want to know what the, what we're working with here. Mmm. Ma. Well, to be honest, they're dry as a bone. All right, folks. I got the old lady here. And let me just let me just show you what we're working with. They did burn on the bottom. Why? Because it's too close uh, to the charcoal over there. But we can cut that off. But that's a lesson learned. Yes, you can cook, can cook them in the Dutch oven. What you want to do is less charcoal on the bottom, more charcoal on the top, and then you won't and then you won't have this issue. And all I did was put a little bit of butter in there and even 
that they even they burnt they didn't stick they're just coming they're just coming right out of there you know the old lady's giving me a thumbs up on these guys but they're they're not the taste i was looking for they're not the they're not what i was going for i'm not saying they're bad Shit. i'm not saying they're bad but they're certainly not what i was looking for so anyhow, I got some olive oil circulating in there. And I'm about to drop this chicken in here like it's uh, 1999. I'm not even waiting on her to get back. Just drop it in there. Let's go to work. So now I gotta figure out what the hell, how the hell I'm gonna solve this problem right here. Cause I got these hot coals over here, which will basically turn this thing into a Dutch oven. I don't care. Everybody's hungry, so I got to get the I got to get the party started here. So olive oil and a quarter stick of butter here on my chicken to get it going. Kick it up to 140. My damn cigars out. Shit, that's hot. Damn, fucking potatoes sticking to the top. Try to set this down. without spilling oh shit any coals on my ass oh god damn hot potato I gotta somehow get the coals in, in here alright turn this guy like this get that going and then take this dude. And gently. Look at that. Ha <laughs> ha. Shuffle. Shuffle the rest of those coals into the grill without spilling any charcoal or spilling any potatoes. And I think I've done it. Hell yeah. Folks, when you take olive oil, when you take olive oil and butter and combine it, I mean, there's literally nothing else on this chicken. Olive oil, butter, and chicken is what I'm working with right now. I'm telling you, the smell coming off of this is, is like damn magic. And we'll put this here. Those potatoes are probably never cooked. Ah, shit. This little grill here, this is perfect for going to the beach and cooking six burgers. That's what that little grill is designed to do. You can like preload it, fold the legs over so you can just like tote it with this handle. It's a perfect little beach going picnic grill to cook six burgers on. That's what you do with that little Ace Hardware grill. You know, historically we've been very transient with our travels over here. And shit, my cigar went out. That's why I bought it. But I'm trying to do cooking shows on a on a bigger scale for multiple people. It's not the ideal piece of gear. It's just not. Folks, and now I'm going to hit it with, uh, with the onions, the garlic, and the carrots. Just a quick dump in there like that. Take the tent back up. And now, what I'm going to do is flip that lid on there. And see, this is the joy of cooking with cast iron. You see those scars and the, the dirt from the charcoal? Folks, with cast iron, you can put it in the oven. You can put it on the stove. You can put it over the flame. You can put it over the charcoal. You can put the charcoal on top of it. Cooking with cast iron is a way to go. You buy a couple pieces, it basically lasts. It lasts for like several generations. All right, so at this point, it's time to creamy it up. It's time to creamy it up. So I just throw in this full cream 
there ain't no secret to it i mean cream butter olive oil you pretty much come up with a really really good soup and i i will go with the whole thing i think i'll get yeah i got enough for the whole thing because all i'm going to do is instead of taking that pie crust i'm just going to drop a little bit of dough down in there to make a few noodles and we will just let this simmer look at that oh my goodness folks you you've seen me cook these almost exact dishes okay you've seen me cook these these dishes like this before very similar yeah they're all very similar but you know, i'm gonna tell you what everybody loves them they're always delicious and it's always fresh ingredients this is my dough you see i had made that right there to uh you know to go in the bottom and ba basically make like a casserole sort of like a cobbler but that's not going to happen right now so all i'm going to do is just tear off uh, a few pieces all right so a couple more small pieces folks couple more small pieces and then we're just gonna we're gonna call it a racky good oh yeah my goodness come on man oh yeah now we get to tune out these taters got them in the olive oil smelling delicious In the morning I'm on Times Square with a big motorcycle game coming through. Folks, man, just sitting here at my computer. All of a sudden, it sounded like the police were coming for somebody. Kept getting closer and closer. I said, "Damn, I better get get up, and make sure they're not not looking for me." Nah, just kidding. Help. Man, it sounded like the ambulance was coming to pick somebody up, but. They going on some type of parade or something. I don't know. Always pandemonium here on Times Square, my friends. Always an interesting, something exciting going on right here at Times Square. But I don't, I don't know. They got some type of party going on. But I'll tell you this. You know, Soupy's got a, got a pretty good fire department. So that's uh, comforting to know. So shout out to everybody working at the fire department up in Subic on standby in case we need them and have some police and even some military folks rolling through too so appreciate them being on duty keeping everything peaceful here in the philippines so shout out to everybody but next time invite me to the party because i don't know where y'all are going y'all headed up towards the mountains maybe just going up there and turn around and coming back i don't know but nobody told me about the party so i'm feeling a little jealous and a little left out all right, folks, we're just welcoming them out. That's a beautiful Sunday morning here. My goodness. A little action overlooking Times Square. All right, folks. Everything's back to normal now. Folks, let me just show you a big shout out to Faye. 
base got my got the balcony of the penthouse suite all straightened out look at there palm tree mountain clean laundry you know clean laundry drying through the natural sunshine reducing my carbon footprint and look at this she's got this place all slicked out you know getting ready for the next cooking show my goodness life is good my friends Okay, I'll, I'll get out to the one half of my own insurance. 